All right, kids, who's ready to do some magic? So today I wanna to talk about another magic candle that you can use if you need some protection. So we're gonna be talking about um, the garlic candle right here. So this is what it looks like. I'm gonna to try to get closer here so you can see. And then this is what it has on the back side. Um, so the garlic protection, it's a little bit more serious than some of the other candles that you'll use. Um, and I'll tell you too on the back here, let me read a little bit. Um, it says, you know, it's protecting you from um, evil, from demons, enemies, and those which intend to kill or hurt me, right? So this is a very serious candle. So this is not something you use if your best friend's mad at you or your boss is being a jerk at work. Um, this is something you use if things are very, very serious and you need a lot of extra protection. Now, I don't normally have to use these very often, but there are a couple of cases where I have. Um, I had some particular neighbors one time that were dangerous and I was scared. Um, about, you know, my safety and what was going on next door and it was not able to move. And so um, I lit a couple of these candles um, and I will tell you that they worked very well and um, things straightened out shortly after that. Um, so the second thing we kind of want to know is, okay, so we kind of know like when we should use them and how serious this is, but so how do we use these candles? Well, the first thing I'll say is if you bring this candle back from the store, um, cleanse it a little bit, right? Because we don't know who's touched this or who's picked it up or sneezed on it. We don't know, right? So um, I have a little cleansing spray that a friend of mine made and I'll use that sometimes. You can also do um, any kind of smudge. So whether you're using, um, you know, rosemary, palo santo, sage, um, whatever it is that you like to smudge with, you can smudge with this. If you don't know how to smudge, I have another video on here that'll teach you guys how to do that. So when you are ready to light this candle and release that energy into the world. It depends if you want to do this or not. I have a friend that does it. And so I kind of learned how to do it this way. I take the candle and I bang it three times on the um, surface that I'm going to be lighting on, whether it's like the wood or whatever, just don't smash it on a countertop. That's like granite. Cause you don't want it to break, but you just kind of want to shake it three times um, on the surface before you light it. Uh, the next thing you want to do is you want to kind of charge the candle and this can be done a couple of different ways. So some people like to just read simply the incantation that's on the back and that's okay if you want to do that. Some people like to um, add their own incantation, which is specific for the situation. That's something I like to do. Um, my personal practice, you can copy me or you can do whatever feels right to you, is I will usually read the incantation on the back and then I will put my hands over the candle here because the energy I'm gonna charge the candle with is gonna be coming from my hands, right? Um, and so I wanna hold it like this and then I will say whatever it is that I need the candle to do specifically, right? It's like giving directions or instructions. Um, and the universe is very specific and it has kind of a funny sense of humor about being specific. So um, you need to be very careful with your intention and word things properly. So this part of the program is where you can add in somebody's name specifically, right? Like I could have added in the neighbor's name specifically to direct um, this protection energy um, that, that way on top of them. Um, and you can ask for, you know, specifically what you want. I need X, Y, and Z to happen, right? So that's kind of where you're charging the candle. So you're telling it what you want it to do. Then the next part after that is you want to charge it with your energy, right? Because your energy and your intention are the most important parts of any magical spell work process. That's what's going to make it happen. Um, and so you also, when you're doing this, you need to be mindful. It's not just something where you follow the instructions. Okay, I'm going to bang it on the counter. I'm going to read the thing and then I'm going to do this. Like you really have to have a lot of intention and energy behind what you're doing. You have to mean it. You have to feel it or it's not going to work. It's just going to be a random candle that you light in your house and it's not going to do anything, right? That's where the magic comes from. It comes from within you. So you need to pull all of that energy and those emotions out and channel that into the candle before you light it. And that's what's gonna be really, make your magic really effective. So as you're holding it, I like to kind of just sit and, you know, close my eyes and think about um, what I want to be happening. And I kind of try to envision the outcome in my head. I might, if somebody's bothering me, I might envision them being, you know, their arms being wrapped down towards their sides, right? So that they can't come and work against me. Um, you know, I might just visualize the energy in my body going into this candle, right? And my hands will get kind of hot and tingly. Um, and that's what I'll do to charge it. Now you can do whatever feels right for you. Magic is not a one size fits all t-shirt. So if you feel inspired to do this exactly fine, if you want to tweak it a little, if you have other things, that's good too. Um, so do whatever your intuition is telling you to do. The other thing I want to say is how do you know when you're done? Well, how do you know when you're done charging the candle? 
Well, the thing is, you'll kind of know. You'll feel your the energy in your hands kind of loosen up. For me, sometimes, too, um, I kind of get everything kind of gets the stillness inside. Um, the energy that I feel just kind of mellows down and there's this kind of calm. Um, and sometimes, too, one of my guides will tell me, like, um, I hear the word stop a lot in my head sometimes, whether I'm, like, shuffling cards or if I'm doing energy work. And it's just the, the cue for me that I know that things are done right? And I can move forward to the next phase. So whatever yours is might be different, but just pay attention to what that is for you. And when you're done, all you have to do is light the candle. Um, now, some people I know like to put essential oils and things on the top, um, which is okay too. Just if you're going to be doing that, just make sure that you're, you don't put too much on because you don't want like an inferno to come up. You don't want the oil to catch fire in this big situation at your house. Fire safety, um, safety first. Um, and then you can light it and make sure that you put it somewhere safe where it's not going to catch anything else on fire. Make sure you put a hot plate underneath because as this does burn down, it will get hot. And sometimes if you try to move it too, if you touch the candle, the candle's hot and you can't move it. So um, make sure that you just, you um, are safe when you're burning the candles. Some people like to let these burn continuously. Um, legally, I cannot advise you to do that because I do not want anything bad to happen to you or your house. So if you need to recharge this candle, right? Say you're burning it, you need to go to bed, you need to go to the grocery store. The best way to recharge your candle is to um, extinguish the flame. I never blow a candle out. I always use a snuffer uh, because just for me, and it's a personal, it's a personal thing that I do. Um, you can do whatever you want. But for me personally, I just feel like, you know, one life force, me, is not meant to extinguish another life force, the candle. So I always use a snuffer when I'm, I'm blowing um, anything out. It's just kind of a sign of respect to spirit to do it that way. Um, and so that's what I do. So I will snuff the candle out and I will leave and I will go do my business or whatever I have to do. And if I want to come back, um, you know, I don't always just light it. Sometimes I might kind of recharge it if it's been out for a while, or sometimes I might just like re, um, recite my affirmations or my intentions, right, for the candle. And then I will relight it just as a little reminder in case it got sleepy while I was gone, you know. But um, I think that that's always a good thing. So don't panic if you have to snuff the candle out. It'll still work for you. Um, but sometimes it's good to just kind of um, refresh the intention before you light it, right? So um, that makes it a little bit easier if you feel like you have to leave or you don't want to put it out because you're going to ruin the whole spell. Um, it's totally fine. Um, you can put it out and nothing bad is going to happen. It's just going to recharge when it comes back. You should also let this burn continuously all the way down to the bottom, right? You don't want to snuff it out at the bottom. Just let it burn all the way down. The second part that I'll talk about here is a lot of people too, um, they want to know how to do the spell, but then they also want to know if it's working. So how do you tell if it's working? So you can kind of tell by how the flame is burning, right? You can kind of do pyromancy. There's um, different websites and stuff you can look up. Oh, is my flame really small? Is it really big? Um, you know, is it splitting down the middle? Is it popping and crackling? All these different things will give you some information um, how, so you can tell how things are going. Now, I'm going to share a really um, ex interesting experience that I had with one of my candles, right? Most of my candles will burn down um, and, you know, they'll, they'll kind of be black at the top or they'll kind of be a little bit cloudy or different things like that. Um, the last one I burned, the situation wasn't too bad. I'll show you what happened. So I have a little bit of wax left here at the bottom. This is also indicative, uh, indicative of something. So you can look that up too as well. Um, and you can see the glass. I don't know. You can see it's like a little cloudy, right? Like it's cloudy. It's kind of murky. It's not super clear. Um, and that also means for me, when I look at that, that there was some stuff that I was being protected from, but it wasn't that bad, right? I have had candles like this burned down before um, who that have been really, really awful. The story I'm going to tell you um, about the very, it's actually the very first time that I burned down one of these candles. Um, it was with a neighbor issue that I was having. Um, the candle that I burned, it broke. It shattered. When it was burning, the whole top part was as black as this writing on here. And when it got down to about, probably about here, I heard this huge pop and I looked over and the whole top of the glass had fallen over. There were little glass pieces around, you know, um, wax was coming out and the candle had, you know, it had burned itself out from the explosion. So that's not a usual occurrence that happens. However, if it does happen, what I will tell you is, is that some seriously gnarly, nasty energy that is happening. Um, and that candle just took a really big hit for you so that you didn't take the hit. So I burned one more candle after that and that one burned a lot more clearer. 
it was interesting at the same time also the the things going on next door had settled down considerably so if you have any questions please let me know um, i'd be happy to answer them for you um, until next time magic responsibly thank you for watching and have an absolutely beautiful day